All right, so this chapter, what we want to focus on are getting these sort of cool caustic patterns uh, refracting through all the ice and the liquid itself. Um, I'll be honest with you, this setting's going to take a little bit of time to tweak. Um, it's not the easiest thing to set up. Well, it's easy to turn on, but e it's not easy to completely art direct. But as you see in all those sort of renders that we pulled up for reference before, they always kind of have that really nice pattern uh, going through the material, the liquid itself. And I'll be s honest with you, I'm a sucker for these sort of caustic patterns. Uh, if you ever have dinner with me or sitting outside with a glass of wine or some water in my hand, I'm always playing with the sun and playing with the glass and refracting those patterns on the table. Um, just something I've found myself being sort of addicted to. I'm always tweaking and playing with those. But it's something I really like, and it's also something in the 3D, in Moto, that looks really cool. It just adds that s sort of second layer of realism to the scene. Um, just, again, it's going to take a little bit of tweaking to really get them lined up where we want, but I'll give you some tips and tricks along the way to get them there. So to do so, I want to add another spotlight in our scene. So come to our item list, add layer, lights, add that spotlight, and again, let's change the display down to maybe what, 0.5, or what was the other ones, 0.25, just so it's not so large in our scene. Again, that doesn't actually change any of the intensities, it's just visible for how large it is in the scene. So on the item, change the display tab itself, 0.25. Um, so to make good caustic patterns, one thing I found is a nice narrow light um, will help kind of, or else the uh, broad lights and send those patterns out really far, but we want to kind of just focus right here down at the bottom. So I'm going to change the cone angle to something kind of small. Let's even get rid of the soft edge or less of a softer edge uh, on there. And I also want to really bump up the radiant intensity, uh, maybe 50. Again, we're going to play with this. It's all These are all numbers that we're going to tweak along the way. But we kind of know we want the pattern coming down here right below the glass. So just quickly, I'm going to start sort of positioning the light, rotate him kind of so he's coming from behind, pick it up, move it over, angle it back down. And we want to position it so it's bouncing through the light itself. And you can see the diffuse part of the, or the diffuse patterning on the uh, table. So it's kind of a good indicator of, well, it's a perfect indicator of where the light's coming from. Again, we want to come positioning, angling it a little bit more closer to, towards the camera and moving it over. Because really we want to get that pattern just coming right here. Um, it might be too high, so let's pull it up. Angle it down. Again, all this is going to have to get tweaked and refined along the way. But up, down, rotate it towards the camera a bit more, move it. You're going to have to do this all on your own, figure out what's working. But now we can kind of see the shadows are aiming towards the camera. The diffuse color is getting real bright here. And you can kind of imagine where this diffuse is, which is where the caustic patterns is going to come. Um, so you see some stuff happening here, and that's, you might think that's the caustic, but that's really just the shadow is coming through that glass uh, and picking up the material from that liquid. And what we want is we don't actually want that light emitting anything but caustic rays. And to do that is on the light material itself. So right here we have the light item type selected, and that's where his intensity and things like that are. But I'm going to come to the light material, and here you can see there's some sliders for effect diffuse, effect specularity, effect step surface, and also effect caustic rays. So we don't want to actually light the table um, with this light. I mean, that would be more realistic, but see how bright that is with that 100% or that 50% intensity? We don't want that. We don't want any shadows coming from this light either. So I'm going to turn the diffuse to zero. Now we don't have any of those rays coming through. Turn the specularity to zero. So we're not picking up any specularity rays coming through there. And the subsurface down to zero. So all we're doing right now is affecting the caustic rays, which you don't see right now. 
you don't see for two reasons. Uh, one reason is we have to turn those on uh, in the render global illumination settings because those emit their own sort of bounce rays. And two um, is unfortunately, this is the, I think the one thing that Moto's preview engine actually doesn't render. These caustic rays are pretty render intensive. Um, so that's kind of one of the reasons why they're not as fun to set up or to really, they're fun, to, easy to set up and not always fun to art direct is because they take a little bit of time to, uh, because you have to do a test renders to really see where the pattern is coming. Um, so again, they don't, even though we're going to turn them on here in the render settings really soon, we don't actually see them in preview. We actually have to do a physical render to see them. Um, but that's not too big of a deal because Moto's render engine is so fast. Um, while we're here on the lights themselves, we have these other two spotlights. I'm going to come to those ones and come to the material itself. And before we turn off effect specularity, but I don't want these to actually affect the caustic rays. Uh, they take a while to calculate. And really, I only want the main one to be emitting those caustic rays through the light. So the other two lights that we have in this scene. We're going to turn those and turn caustics off on those. It will help with speed of calculation. And also, I don't want any sort of blue caustic rays bouncing over here. I don't want any of the other lights bouncing around. We want to art direct them with this very specific focused light itself. So I'm going to come back up to our render settings. So in the shader tree, click our render node, come to the global illumination tab. And down here on the very bottom, you can see there's direct caustics. So if I click that on, um, I'm going to leave these numbers by default um, until we start aligning them. Then we'll bump up the total photons probably to a few million. Right now that's up to 100,000. Um, but now we have our light caustics on. Um, without turning direct caustics on, you always get a little bit bouncing from the global, global illumination from the HDR. You will get caustic, but you won't get them actual from Moto's physical lights themselves. That you have to turn on uh, direct caustics. Um, you also see this indirect caustic tab. That's again coming from the GI or the indirect rays coming from the global, I mean, from the uh, environment itself. And those are refraction only. If you want reflection or you want both, you can turn them on there. Um, so you had a ring in your scene, like a physical jewelry ring, and you wanted the reflection uh, rays, like in the center of the ring, to be. Uh, um, emitting acoustic rays, you would want to turn this to reflections, or probably both, both reflections and refraction rays. And that way the gold from the ring would actually be bouncing caustic rays on the table. You always sort of see those in nice product shots. But all we wanted to do for us is turn direct caustics on, and now we're going to go do a render. But before we actually do that, um, just from personal experience, I'm going to actually turn off these ice cubes and we're just going to be emitting those through the liquid material and through the glass itself. Um, that's just going to help kind of see where those caustic rays are coming. They'll probably be a little bit faster because they're not actually having to calculate through the liquid material. So just why we're sort of setting these up, again this is going to be a lot of moving the light, tweaking the light, hitting render, moving, tweaking, hitting render. To help speed all that process up, I'm going to just, just turn off those ice cubes uh, for now. I'm going to hit save, I'm going to do a render, and then I'll pause the screen capture while it's going on. Actually, let's just see if we can see them actually happening real quick before we pause them. And in the GI tab, which is rendering now, we don't actually see them positioned where they are, where I expect them to see. I'm guessing this little ray over here. Well, let me pause this, and when the render is done, I'll show you where they're at. All right, that rendered pretty quickly. Only 2 minutes 48 seconds. Um, and we can see, well, it did emit the caustics, but they're not really positioned where we want to. They're kind of way too far out here, breaking frame. So this is where it's time to start moving our light and trying this again. And this is going to take a little bit of time to get this light directly where you want. But I uh, think just looking at the angle, if you kind of trace back the line here and imagine it's aiming towards the light, you probably have to move the light up higher so it's straight, coming straight down. 
So that's the first thing I do is take our light, pull it up, and then angle it back down towards the glass. If you look at the kind of little UI here, you can see this cone angle drawing down um, from the light. So you can kind of see that it's going right through the glass. Imagine the pattern of the caustics is going to be hitting more or less right there. Maybe I'll move it a little bit closer. Uh, I, again, if I want to move it straight down, uh, I came my action center to selection. Now my handle is aligned directly to my light. I can get them a little bit closer. So it's going to be more intensity coming through there. And let's try that one more time. Render. And without having to do a full render, you should be able to see if there's any bright values in this GI um, tab itself. Um, but guess what? I don't see any caustic rays or any bright values rendering right now. Makes me a little suspicious. So I'm going to abort this render and try again. Maybe turn it this way, bring it back over, angle it down, back up. Try again. Well, you we can already see in the first pass that we're getting something there. Cool. So you can see these big bright values happening right here now. We know that's our caustic pattern. So we're getting something. Getting a lot closer. Let's pause this and we'll come back and see where they're at. Well, that got us close. Uh, again, this is all going to be how and where you want it, but now we can see that caustic pattern happening more or less where you want it. So I just pull it over to the right turn it to the left. Hopefully we'll start aiming it, angling it this way. Again, it's super bright. That's because we turn the intensity on the light, I believe, to 50, but we don't have those ice cubes in there. Once we add the ice cubes, it's going to really soften out this um, refraction. Um, so just one more time, I'm going to position my light and do another render. So I don't want to bore you with all that. Let me just hit pause and come back after I get that light where I like it. All right, so after a bit of manipulation to that light, uh, we got it more or less kind of where I like it here. Um, one thing to tell you, I did change the cone angle. For, I think it was 15, down to 10, which made it a little bit skinnier. And if you look at kind of where it's set up in the scene relative to the camera, it's pretty much right between, right behind the glass, kicked off a little bit to the left. Look at back towards the camera. All that's going to be refined again, or tweaked maybe one more time. Let me open my render tool again, open render window. Let's see where it's at here, but we don't have those ice cubes. Again, I turn those off. Um, it's just a little easier to read where it's at with them turned off. So now I'm going to turn my ice cube layer back on and try that again and see what we get. Again, just having those ice cubes in there is going to change the refraction pattern um, a little bit, but we'll see if it's more or less where it lined up in the same place. Let me pause this again. All right, uh, pretty cool. Uh, you can see the render time. If you look at the last one, added about two minutes, so almost pretty much doubled the render time of putting the ice cubes in. So that was, again, one of the main reasons why we turned them off, which is to help when we were setting up the light uh, have quicker render times. But now we're getting some cool stuff. Getting a lot more of this sort of breakup in the pattern, in the refractive pattern um, overall. Um, I think it's slightly still too far. I want to move it one more time. Move the light a little bit more to the left to get that there. I'm also going to, just looking at the render, I want to turn my camera down. Maybe pull it up and angle it down a touch just to see the top line of this water. Um, these are all things, you know, you're going to tweak as you're, you hit render, tweak. It's always an evolving process um, when doing these sort of shots. Um, yours probably looks nothing like mine, and that's good because everyone has their own artistic taste to it. Um, I think that the values are probably too bright on that caustic, so maybe my intensity of 50 on that light was too much, so I'm going to drop him down to 25. Um, somewhere along that process, I also duplicated my light because I kind of liked what the caustic position was once, 
And I wanted to save that in case I moved it too far along. So I'm going to delete the one. And he was just kind of a dummy light I had. Move him. I dropped his intensity to 25. Let's move it slightly to the left. A touch. This has big changes when you move these over. Um, and again, I wanted to kind of move my camera. So I'm going to change this perspective window here to my camera. And I'm just going to slightly hold Option, turn down a touch. I just want to see the sort of top line of that water. Just all, just kind of the personal taste, how I want this thing framed. Uh, we'll see if I like that. Might have been too far. Maybe even zoom in a touch. You know, it's kind of changing the composition overall, but that might look good. Who knows? Still this strong line bringing to the center. Um, composition might be a little weird now with the camera up here. But I wanted to kind of break frame or break that water line with the camera and see the back of it a touch. Who knows? Might might have been too much change. Again, it's always kind of tough to know when to change um, these settings here. Um, the other thing is we have that other probe. We have the one image projecting through the camera in the environment, down in the environment now, um, which we see right there. But we have the other one kind of that's in the scene, um, that light probe that we chose earlier, which is sort of mapped all the way around the whole scene. But I'm looking through, just while I do that render, I'm looking through the reflections and the refractions of that image. And overall, it's looking a little bit too crisp. I don't want that so much. I just want some sort of illusion of life back there. Um, so I actually want to blur that image a little bit. And we can blur it in a, another application, or we can blur it here at render time by selecting the image itself. And on the image, if we have anti-aliasing on, we want to change that minimum spot. So that's basically each pixel is when it sends out a ray, it's looking at one pixel and bringing it back. So it's a very crisp image. But if I change this minimum spot to something like 20, that's actually going to soften that image. When that one ray comes up, it's going to sample 20 rays and bring them back. It's kind of like adding a Gaussian blur in your post program. Um, you can kind of see in those reflections, it just sort of softens some of those harder um, edges. So we're not getting so much crisp detail out of that um, HDR. Maybe even 20 was too much. Maybe I'll go to 10. So we still pick some of the variation. But basically, the minimum spot you can think of as a Gaussian blur. And we're just blurring that image a little bit at render time. So again, let's save. And one last one before we start tweaking our render settings. I know it's kind of boring to watch in the tutorial. But instead of actually just, hey, move your camera, move your light, I actually want to show you what I'm actually doing. So when you're doing this yourself, you kind of can follow along or do all this on your own. And no, I'm not just kind of, you know, some tutorials are just sort of, it's like a cooking uh, show. You pull the cooked turkey, turkey out of the oven and say, hey, this is what happened. But I do want to kind of take you through all my mistakes and all my sort of tweaks so you can see um, how to refine on your own. Um, but again, one more time, let's hit render. I'll pause it and come back and show you what we get. All right, um, pretty cool. We had the little camera change I think I like. Um, still feel my caustics just a touch too far to the right. Um, I'm going to move it one more time, kind of get a little bit over the place a little bit better. Um, the brightness still is maybe a little bit too hot, so I might turn the intensity down. But I'm going to call this good for this chapter, and the next one we'll get into some camera effects with depth of field, and let's we'll go into the render settings to start removing all this noise that we're getting here, um, and the anti-aliasing and the refractions. So for now, that's kind of how we set up our light caustic, and this next chapter, probably the last chapter, will just be refining our render settings, adding some sort of final tweaks to the scene, and pumping out a really nice, full-res, uh, beautiful render.